What's up guys, Sagi here and welcome to another 5 Minute Friday. This is a new series where I spend 5 minutes giving you the most important information about a specific product or topic, because who doesn't have 5 minutes? So let's throw 5 minutes on the clock and get started. Today I want to talk about a super hot topic in the industry and that is 4K video. I get a ton of comments from people asking about 4K, wanting to know more about it, and whether or not it's something that they actually need. So for starters, let's quickly go over what 4K or Ultra HD means. Nowadays, it refers to a resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels, which is four times as many pixels as 1080p or full HD. Now, initially 4K used to describe footage that was 4096 by 2160 when it was introduced in digital cinema, but the two terms are used interchangeably these days, so we're just gonna keep saying 4K. Going back to all those extra pixels, we're getting twice the width and twice the height of our full HD or 1080p footage, which is great for a couple of reasons, even if your final render is going to be in 1080p. Meaning, even if you take good 4K video and downscale it to 1080p resolution, the image quality will look better than shooting in 1080p. Now you're essentially oversampling each pixel by a factor of four, and you're getting super sharp and crispy video. Now on top of that, many cameras are shooting at a higher bit rate when you're shooting in 4K, which can give you more color detail. Now this can help reduce the chance of color banding because this additional detail can improve gradual changes in color. Now finally, you can reduce and sometimes completely eliminate common video artifacts such as Moira, again, because we're capturing a higher resolution source. Now, those were some technical advantages for shooting in 4K. Let's talk about some practical ones. If you have a one camera setup, you can use 4K footage and then crop, zoom, or pan without losing resolution. So if you're looking to remove jump cuts from your video or you wanna add interesting movement to your footage, shooting your source in 4K can really help. The next advantage comes when we need to stabilize the footage in post-production. A lot of non-linear editors like Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro have image stabilization algorithms that can help make footage look much smoother. They do this by analyzing each frame and then making slight rotation adjustments and crops to compensate for camera shake. The problem is that this also results in decreased resolution of the processed footage. So once again, having all those extra pixels by shooting 4K gives the software a lot more data to work with and even slightly cropped 4K is gonna look much better than 1080p. So this all sounds great, but let's look at some of the challenges of shooting in 4K and discuss some of the solutions. Now, the first thing I wanna do is dispel the notion that 4K means good or that all 4K is created equal. 4K simply refers to the number of pixels that you have. And just because your phone or camera can shoot in 4K doesn't mean that it shoots good 4K. 4K is not raw. You're simply capturing a bigger picture, which can give you, but does not necessarily mean more color info. So next, when you're shooting in 4K, you're going to get larger files, which means you're gonna need more storage. Now, luckily, storage is becoming less and less expensive which helps with the fact that you need more and more of it. And there are some great solutions that offer massive storage and redundancy. Now, larger files also mean that you might need faster and larger capacity memory cards. Again, as technology improves, we're seeing much more affordable options that still do a great job. And finally, probably the most legitimate objection to shooting in 4K is hardware limitations. These larger files with all these additional pixels mean that your editor has to work a lot harder. You need a better processor and more RAM, and these can quickly add up. What I recommend that you do is use proxy editing. This means that your editing software will create lower resolution versions of your 4K files, and then use them to edit. This will give you smooth playback and you can quickly scrub through your timeline, cut and add effects and transitions without being slowed down by having to process huge 4K files. Then when you do your final render, your software will replace the lower resolution files with the higher resolution 4K source files. So that wraps up this week's 5 Minute Friday. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by leaving a comment giving this video a thumbs up, and if you haven't yet, join the community by hitting the subscribe and notification buttons. Also, if you have any follow-up questions, 
I do my best to answer every comment and question that I get, so go ahead and drop them in the comment section below. For more tips and tutorials, you can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Tech Gear Talk. And you know what I always say, buy it nice or buy it twice. Good luck and see you soon.